Well, welcome, Pastor Jeff, to another episode of Distinct People, Distinct Time. Today, we are going to talk about the position of worship pastor. It's not a secret. The whole church knows. I think everybody in the community knows that Parkwood is without a worship pastor. Um, it's not because we haven't been trying, right? We have been looking. We have been diligently trying to find someone that can fill this position, but it's a difficult position to fill. Right. So we thought we'd take a whole episode and talk about the position of worship pastor. We're going to talk about the position specifically, but also kind of how we search for one right. and things like that. So let's dive right in. It begins with candidates, right? You got to right. find Correct. candidates. So walk us through that process about where we find candidates from. Right. So, uh, well, there, there are multiple avenues that, that we would use to search for candidates, uh, and when we put the word out in those places, candidates come in. We right. knew that we would get an overwhelming response to this. So to do the uh, initial vetting phase, we used a, a, a firm to help us uh, with that. They had uh, right under 700 people apply for this job. Uh, wow. Say that again. 700. Se almost 700 yeah. people applied for this job. That's yeah. It's insane. incredible. That's so incredible, And that would yeah. have overwhelmed us. I mean, we'll, oh, yeah. what, we wouldn't have. We spent all our time sifting through candidates. I mean, it's typical. It's an overwhelming number for any job we do, but that would have just yeah. buried us. Mm. Uh, so they narrow it down. They do the vetting okay. process to narrow it down to right. two to four people. Uh, they present those two to four, and then it's our job from there. Okay. So we take it from from there. Uh, we've been down to two to four one time, did not hire any of those people. Uh, okay. We're back down into that two to four phase again okay. of of, okay. of looking at people so just being uh fully uh, disclosing and narrowing that down to a primary candidate that we deal with that candidate until we hire them or we decide to move on from them uh, to someone else so okay wow. that's that's how we handle it and there's interview processes i mean there's yes. it's not just one interview there's multiple interviews multiple. that happen from the time we say we're going to at least move to the next step with a candidate right multiple multiple interviews yeah, yeah. So um, it's just important for people to see in those multiple interviews and things that we do, we're trying to discover a lot of things about the individual. And this is true of any of our hiring. Right, this is right. not just this role, but I thought it was important to talk about this role right, because okay. this role affects the entire church. Yes, it is a high profile Everybody. position. Yeah. Okay. Right. So let's get super detailed for just okay. a second. Um, and I really think this part is going to be super helpful, not just for our congregation, but for anyone else in the community, other churches that might be listening. This is important. This is what we look for. Right. Not just in a worship pastor candidate, although we're going to be specific how it relates to worship. Right. But there are some specific things that we are looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so generally speaking, right. what are the things we're looking for in a worship pastor? So we're, we're, we're breaking down any pastoral role, any position that we're hiring into six C's. Uh, and if you've ever okay. heard me talk about leadership development, we talk about this because we want to develop people who right. go from here with these six have, C's. Yeah, right. right. So you're talking about convictions, character, calling, competency, capacity, and chemistry. Now, okay. Parkwood, listen very carefully to me. Those of you who are not a part of Parkwood, it's not going to mean a lot to you. They're not seven C's. <laughs> Chad is not a C. <laughs> and, and, and I say that with a joke. Yeah, it's funny. But, but, but. this is what we're all going to have to overcome. We had a brother who served here 13 years, incredibly gifted, right. oh, yeah. incredible impact in the life of the church. Right. And if Chad is one of the things that you, you have to equal B, yeah. Chad right. Pollard, right. we're done. Because there's only one Chad Pollard in the world. That's right. So That's right. look beyond. We're not trying to duplicate Chad. Mm. We're trying to look at these things, these six things, and how they impact mm. a worship pastor specifically. Mm. That's a good word. Okay. So let's dive right in. Let's break these down. What was the first one? Convictions? Yeah. So they have to have clearly articulated belief, a clear doctrine. Mm. Uh, I could go to multiple passages i was reading and studying through first timothy this morning i mean just clearly that a man's got to have a sound doctrine and that doctrine that this individual has has to be shared with the doctrine and aligned yeah. with the doctrine of parkwood we can't be in a competing belief system and it, and what we've all got to understand 
Uh, theology drives everything in your life. What you believe about God and his word drives right. everything, but it drives a worship pastor. Mm. What he believes about God right. and God's word is dictating then how he's going to lead mm. the people of God. That's right. And, yeah. and then what, what, we, what they choose to sing on Sunday mornings is then influencing the congregation Absolutely. theologically because right. we're singing truths about God, truths about Jesus, right. truths about the Holy Spirit, truths about the Bible, salvation. It's all in the words we sing. So, so the right theology drives what we sing, which then influences the congregation. So we had a guest uh, recently who had been a worship leader in his background, and he said, one of the things I liked about your church is you didn't sing Jesus is my boyfriend songs today. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, right, but that's important. Yeah, I these mean, touchy-feely songs yeah, right. that aren't clear about who Christ is. Right. It, it, yeah. He's just your friend, your buddy, or your boyfriend, you know, that, this, this touchy-feely stuff. This person, yeah. out of their convictions, has to be a worshiper. You mean like themselves? They yes. must be a worshiper. Yes, correct. And I don't mean just displaying worship. They yeah. have to be a worshiper of right. God, and that has to be clear. That takes a lot of time uh, to good. discover. And they have to believe this conviction, okay. that the primary thing about their job is congregational singing, mm. not mm. Right. the platform sings. That's good, yeah. Not that they sing, that the congregation sings. And that we are singing together as the Bible has instructed us to do. And not all worship pastors believe that. Right. You would think they're worship leaders. Right. They're leading us to, in the congregation to worship. But yeah, I think sadly we see a lot right. of that not happening. So mm -hmm. that's good. Okay. Second C, character. <laughs> Explain that a little bit. All right. Character. Well, that's that's clear. Qualifications of an elder have to be met. First mm -hmm. Timothy 3, mm -hmm. uh, Titus chapter 1, uh, 6 through 9. Uh, they have to meet those qualifications. Those things are speaking their character. This has to be a godly man. Mm. Has to be a man who loves Amen. his wife Amen. and his family. Right. Uh, that has to be clear to everyone. The one thing that has to be particularly clear about the character of a, of a worship pastor is is humility. Mm. Um, mm. not n not a false sense of humility. There has to be a humble sense right. uh, of someone up. Upfront people can easily display an air of pride. Right. Sure. Sure. And I'm not talking about confidence. Somebody has to have confidence to get up in front of people. Right. But there has to be have a sense of humility. This comes back to your convictions. What you believe about God right. oh, yeah. drives whether or not you are humble before the people of God. And the other thing, the character of this person, because this is whether people understand this or not, the worship pastor is a people job. Right. And I don't just mean they're up in front of people. They are working with a large number of people. This individual has to love people. Mm. Mm. You can't good. use people. You're not using people to pull off worship. You got to love the people That's good. and care for the people. And, you know, I think sadly, uh, some of the candidates that we've turned down, I think this was the humility thing is tough. I mean, because you have to have a balance of you're in front of people. Mm -hmm. You have to have that confidence, like you said, but there's a level of, like you said, understanding your role. You mm -hmm. are leading people to the throne to worship That's God, right. Almighty God. That's right. um, so yeah, this one is huge. I have, I think I've seen that, and uh, we've seen that play out positively and negatively. So, yeah. okay, the third one, calling. Yeah, Ca calling can be the most sub subjective of things, but what we mean here is a spirit-led conviction regarding your life's direction. Okay. So, this individual has to have a conviction that their direction in life is to lead worship. In other words, okay. we can't hire somebody to come do this. So I could lead worship. I can do that. I have those talents. I can do that. Right. There, there has to be a spirit-led conviction right. that this is what I'm supposed to do. And mm. there has to be a spirit-led conviction that I, I need to do that in this local church, mm. Parkwood. Here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and and okay. because Parkwood is a unique setting sure. for doing that, and it has to be an alignment together and a calling here. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Next, competency. Yeah. So this is the first place people are going to go. Notice this is number four. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, and these are in order. I mean, we want to know what does this person believe, who they are. Yeah. Uh, are they called of God? 
Mm-hmm. Then we have to drill into competency. But these things are crucial. They, these are not optional. Right, right. This person has to have the ability to lead the people of God in worship. Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure. I mean, that's. You can't just be passive. Mm-hmm. They have to be able to lead. They have to be a skilled musician. Sure. Parkwood is full of skilled musicians. And you've got to know right. what's going on with those different instruments and, and things. They have to be a skilled vocalist. Mm-hmm. They have to be able to sing and they have to be able to work with others. A worship pastor at Parkwood. So, like last week, to do the worship service and production, we needed 92 people. Planning Center tells you that. No way. Yeah. Wow. So you have to be a leader of leaders. Right. Organizing that, managing that, getting all that together. Yeah. Empowering wow. people, teaching people. Right, right. Uh, they've got to be a coach. Mm-hmm. Have to be able to coach people up, grow people. Um, they may not have to be able to lead, or they do not have to be able to lead every aspect of the worship ministry. But they have to be able to empower someone okay, right, right. to lead every aspect of the the worship ministry, and, and this has kind of been a hang-up with some people. They, you know, they got they're looking for these certain right. things they got to do. Um, they just have to be able to be a good leader and and have to have shown that competency in the past. Hmm. Okay, so there's a little bit of experience that is factored. Oh, experience there too, definitely. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, especially you, at a place like Parkwood. Yeah, I mean, you, you couldn't be a newbie leading here. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. Okay. Uh, number five, capacity. Explain that a little. All right. Bit. So that speaks to their work ethic. Mm, okay. Okay. Uh, again, this is a large yeah. ministry. You know, you know, I, I've had people say it's kind of similar to me. Well, you know, all you're doing is putting together a sermon. What do you do the rest of the week? <laughs> a worship, a that. worship pastor and that and the worship staff, they're thinking through every aspect of that service, right? Uh, planning for that, uh, working through that. So they have to have a good work ethic. This person cannot be easily overwhelmed. Hmm. That, that has to do with the capacity of what they're doing every week, but it has to do with the moment on Sunday. Right. If it blows up, right. this person has to have the capacity right. to pull it together and and move on. They have to be organized. Yeah. A disorganized person will affect everything. They have to be a decision maker. Wow. Yeah. Got to be able to make decisions and, and take the lead. And, and this capacity has to be true. This person has to be pastoral. They've got to see, I'm not just a worship guy, and when I get everything planned, I go home. Right. There's a pastoral aspect of being a part of our team and a part of this congregation and certainly being pastoral toward those who serve uh, in the worship ministry. Yeah, I think this is too where uh, Parkwood maybe is a little unique because we do expect uh, yes. this worship pastor to be in growth group leadership. Yeah. Maybe not immediately when they right. when they get hired, but it is an expectation. We want them to be right. a part of the of the life of the church, not just in the worship ministry, but in the yes. in the in the disciple making ministry outside of that. We want them to to think of themselves like that and to be that. So yeah, it's a high capacity job. It is. I very mean, much for so. sure. Yeah. All right. Last chemistry. Mm. Chemistry. Chemistry means gelling, coming together, relating to others. So this person first, let's just talk congregation. They've got to relate to the to the church. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Now, I didn't say they have to relate to you. <laughs> right, right, right. 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 Everybody's right. not going to totally say this is my guy. Yeah. Right. Right. That's impossible. But what we're looking at is they relate to the church. This is a multi generational church. Sure. Multi faceted church. People yep. come from all kinds of backgrounds. That's to be somebody. We're not looking for a niche person. Right. Okay. So in other words, we're not just looking for somebody to relate to the older part of the congregation or somebody to relate to the younger part of the congregation. We're looking for somebody who relates to Parkwood. Right. Or, or even someone that, you know, uh, specializes in hymns, but not other songs, right? Or specializes in other songs and not hymns. I mean, you know, that's a, that's been a big deal around here in the right. past. And so that's that could be a niche thing right. with some people. Right. Um, or you could even go, there's a whole bunch of roads we could take yeah, that. Yeah, but right. yeah, they must relate to the entire church. Well, I think that's a good word. So we put this in the interview process. Uh, somebody's with the, 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 the staff a lot. Do they jail with the staff? Right, sure. Particularly sure. The, the team that they'll be working with, but the entire staff. Do they, do, they, do they jail with worship leaders, the band, the choir? So that's a part of, of, of what you're doing. And and, and this last part of chemistry, we missed this one on several hires mm. and did not drill into this. Mm. 
do they fit in this community? Do you want to live in Gastonia? Okay. Right. I mean, we've we've yeah. had people over the years come on staff here. Parkwood's a wonderful church, want to be a part of it. Then they get here and they hate living in Gastonia. Mm. I, I don't understand that. I love yeah. living here. Right. Sure. But sure. you you if you've never lived in a small town right. outside a big city, it can be a yeah. shock to people and in some ways and it's a unique place it is a unique place i mean there's some there's some quirks about it i've been here my whole life mostly so yeah uh i i think that is that's interesting i don't think a lot of people or maybe they do i don't know you can right. maybe but i don't think a lot of people think about that when they hire somebody do yeah. they fit into the community so in the process we we make sure the wife and family come in mm. and put some of these early interviews okay not that we're trying to interview them or whatever just right ride around town go in yeah. stores do you do you see yourself living here because if <laughs> right. you don't then we need to know that okay yep. yeah that's awesome okay so something that i find interesting about this list is that only one of the six c's really has anything to do with the the technical skill of leading worship yeah. you think about it the fourth one competency and you hit on it just a minute ago but conviction character calling capacity and chemistry don't really have to do with the Sunday morning leading of the worship, the technical skill and gifting of leading worship. Right. So why is that? Like you've been around, you've been doing this for decades now. So right. help us, help the congregation, help right. other places and people. Why is that important? Why do we focus on those other five things? I'm not saying that the capacity is not important. They have to, or the competency is not important. They have to be able to do the oh, job, yeah. but why is it important that we focus on those other things? Okay, so for the 4,000th time, here comes the illustration. <laughs> we are not a golf team. <laughs> right. We're a football team. Right. You so say, what does that mean? We're not hiring PGA professionals, a pro right. worship we leader. Just care about the competency. And brother, get your golf clubs, go out there, you yeah. play the best game, put your clubs up, go home, you're done. Awesome. We'll right. golf clap you. You know, Scott, you do your game, we're going to golf clap you. Whoever on staff, no, we're a football team. We are we are working together. together. What happens in worship is affecting growth groups. Maybe, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. It's affecting mission. It's Big affecting time. everything that we are about. Okay. okay. So everything at this church is connected. It is not a bunch of isolated things. So, so we have to function that way. Understand that we have to have people who know how to play their position and play it well. And this is a key sure. position. This sure. is... This is a wide receiver running back yeah. <laughs> core. Yeah. They've got to execute. We don't we don't move sure. forward. Right. 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 Absolutely. So I'm not taken away from that, but we're not just looking for a pro worship leader. Right. We're looking for somebody who's a part of who we are. We're looking for a disciple maker, not a diva. Mm. Which really goes to humility, goes to goes to the character, goes to the calling, goes to the conviction. I mean, that speaks to all of those. Right? Yeah. Like we're not because it would be easy if all we cared about was can they do the job, the technical skill gifting yeah. job. There's a lot of people that can sing. That's right. A lot of people that can play the guitar. A lot that's of people right. that can play piano. Right. But that's we're we're not after that. We're after a disciple maker, someone who's yeah. going to work to in the the ministry of the church, the purpose of Parkwood. Right. They need to be they need to be involved in that, not yeah. just what happens on Sunday morning. Yeah. And you could sit out in the audience and just be wowed by yeah. this individual. Right. Right. Exactly. But then, but then. Meet him at the YMCA and go, that guy's a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> right? right. I'm not saying all worship pastors are like that. No, that yeah. is not my point. Sure. But but we got to be careful here that that somebody is a part of who we are, that we we are all under the Great Commission. Mm, all of yes. us, yes. regardless of what we do here, and we're to be disciple makers. And 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 last I would say, we're hiring a pastor, not a performer. Mm. A pastor. Which deals with people who, who shepherding plan his life here right and, right. and shepherd and care for the people of god and mm. plead before god before he stands up and leads mm. i think that's so important for the church to hear because we really desperately deeply i think within the core of our being we care about all of these six things yes that's one reason why it's taken so long that's right right we're not just out to fill a spot back to trellis in the vine. Yeah. If you've heard previous podcasts, we care about this position deeply. We care about the church deeply. 
And we are desperately, and we, and we are praying. I mean, every elders meeting, we pray for this. Yes. We are individually praying for it. We want yes. God to lead us to the right individual. Yes. And we feel that these six things are what uh, are, are the, the guidelines to help us find the right individual. So as we end the podcast, though, Jeff, there's one thing we haven't really talked about yet. And I, I know you wanted to end the podcast talking about prayer. Yes. So, so as when, when this podcast comes out, and, and I'm sure this is something people will come back to in the future, I hope, is, is uh, we're, we're, Parkwood, we're, we are in the final stages right. uh, of the interview process. Right. Right. And um, we are desperately seeking the Lord, and you need to be seeking the Lord with us. Amen. And, uh, we need to be careful, all of us, and and how how we we move forward uh, before God, and we need to give this to, to prayer, mm. and uh, mm. we don't want to we don't want to jump to this if as long as it takes is as long as it takes, right? And, uh, right. We, we yes. want to be careful and and trust the Lord and walk with the Lord. So I don't know how many times you'll find it in my journal in this process where i've written this sentence what i believe help my unbelief mm. Mm. not just in hiring a worship pastor and hiring all these staff what right. i believe that you're going to do this right. so help my unbelief mm. amen and uh, mm. so so let us give ourselves to prayer let us give ourselves right. to humility mm. in this hour mm. that's wonderful so that's a great way to end this episode. I'm looking forward to the day when this seat is the new worship pastor and you do a podcast where you introduce him to the church. So Amen. let's expectantly pray for that day to happen. So thank you, Jeff. This has been an episode of Distinct People, Distinct Time, a ministry of Parkwood Baptist Church, where we exist to glorify God by laboring together for the growth of all believers while going with the gospel to all peoples.